Now, in order to make all of this work, uh, Harmony libraries have to be written uh, to be aware of an operating system. In an operating system environment, you, you have the possibility of having multiple different threads call into the same library at effectively the same time, um, potentially when the library was in the middle of doing something sensitive, and it's going to have to protect those sensitive resources as it's performing those, those sensitive operations. To do that, Harmony libraries utilize uh, certain, you know, a, a minimalistic set of OS features that m almost any RTOS is going to provide for you. Uh, it uses semaphores to synchronize between threads. It uses mutexes and critical sections to uh, protect those shared resources while it's doing those sensitive operations. Uh, and what the OSAL does is it provides a consistent set of functions, a consistent API or interface for the Harmony libraries to call in order to access those services. This OSAL has to be implemented for whatever OS you plan to use. Uh, and we've implemented it in advance uh, with the help of our uh, RTOS partners for uh, the RTOSs that we already support within Harmony, as well as a bare metal implementation. Now, this is a fairly small, very lightweight uh, set of functions um, that's available to all of the Harmony libraries. It's not really intended. You can use it in your application, but it's not intended for your application. Once you've chosen an RTOS, you probably have reasons you know, and features within that RTOS that you want to use that are not going to be represented in the OSAL. Uh, it's best if you use those features directly. But at that point, your application, of course, becomes specific to that RTOS. If you want to write an RTOS agnostic application that I showed in, uh, in that first slide at the beginning, then you would you know, stay away from those features. In fact, avoid using RTOS features and just utilize um, the capabilities of Harmony and Harmony's libraries.